Hello heroes and welcome to my challenge run of Elden Ring where we try and beat the game as Miss Death. Now we've already beaten Dark Souls 1 as Death, Dark Souls 2 as the Reaper, and Dark Souls 3 as the Grim Reaper, but now it's Death's wife's turn to take on Elden Ring. But death is kind of vague, so what does this entail? Well, when you picture death, what do you think of? Of course, a skeleton garbed in black robes wielding a scythe. Scythes are our only melee weapons we're allowed to use. Black robes are our only armor we're allowed to use. And while I will allow some skeletal gear, it either has to be skeletal robes or a skeletal scythe. I'm not going to go out of either of those two categories. And I feel like death does have access to some dark magic, so I'm going to allow hexes as well. But since Elden Ring doesn't have hexes, I'm going to allow the Rancor spells in the base game and the Putrescent spells in the DLC. But that is all. This is going to be a challenge. Bring it on. Hello heroes and welcome back to episode 3 of my challenge run of Elden Ring. Today I'm going to be trying to increase my magical damage. Now we already have Rancor which is terrible, but we also have Death's Rancor which should be at least a little bit better if we can get high enough stance, but let's increase it even more. Now how can we do that? Well first off rings you can equip four rings and there's three rings in the game that increase magic damage one we already have two is a stronger version of the one we already have but they do stack as in the consecrated snowfields and three is part of ranny's storyline which is why we were up at ranny's rise talking to ranny initiates her like i don't know gang of magical friends <laughs> to show up and you can talk to each of them and one of them is sylvanas and his storyline upon completion well upon like reaching a certain part of the storyline will reward us with our third magical charm the magical scorpion charm now this does have a downside of making you take slightly more damage but hopefully the extra magic damage will be worth it here he is this is who we were looking for this is who we we're looking for I don't know what sylvanas the traitor Come and pay you a visit. I sure will, buddy. I sure will. Why did you not leave? Uh, perhaps I... I'd like you to even you. Good. Now I shall... Okay, so he gives us a special potion. Yep. Yeah. And he wants us to give that to double axe girl from the start of the game. Let's see. Let's see. Also, when is that crazy invasion going to happen? You know, like, at some point, you quick travel back. Oh, it's going to happen right now. It's going to happen right fucking now, chat. How's that for timing? Aha! I like your mask. It shall be mine! Annihilate. Boom! There's the full set. Excellent. We obviously can't wear anything else apart from the head because it would be counted as armor. But we can definitely wear the head. Oh, yes! Yes! Oh, my God. Our deafness just went up by, like, 150%. Fuck yes. And I think this set actually has a secondary effect. Yeah, slowly replenishes HP when HP is low. That's probably never going to come into play, but if we ever live on like one HP, it might be because we recovered HP from this set. It might well be. It might well be. So if you're unfamiliar with Sylvanas' storyline, the Ashen summons that we use are just replicas of the actual creatures, where Sylvanas is creating puppets of actual people, meaning he has them in a room sitting there mindless and he creates like literally them. And there's several characters you can uh, do this through, with throughout the storyline. Now, he wants you to do it to double axe girl, and you can get her as a summon if you wanted it. But you can also choose to instead give the potion to old man McGee over here, and that will progress the storyline and leave her alive as a little bonus. Ah, I think you have to buy all of his spells. The guy did say to buy the spells. That's super expensive purchasing all the spells. Holy shit, that's going to be like 50k. Um, we might be able to skip that step by just going straight to the next one. Here we go, here we go. And it's like guarded by the, uh, the wizard guy. Okay. 
go in here. These are like his, uh, his husks that he summons his puppets from. Double secret. Husk of that girl. Then you read a special message. And now that you've read that message, he realizes you know, and he, it should unlock the ability to purchase them. Uh, should we kill the dragon while we're here? Fuck it, let's do it, chat. Let's do it. Do a little bit of dragon hunting. Okay, these teleports are starting to bum me out, man. Where did he go? Okay, I think he's actually gone this time. I think we, I think you have to fight him in, uh, in like this plateau area later on. It looks like we've unlocked it, but that bonfire's like under that area. About your chambers. Okay, that makes himself up. So we only need two. We only need two, but we have to purchase all of them for him to be like impressed with us. So this is a pretty major leg mission. First off, you can't just buy them with souls. You need the rare starlight shards, which is a limited resource. If you use these to regenerate your magicka, you cannot purchase them. So you have to have saved your starlight shards. Thank goodness we did. And you also need to purchase every single one of his spells. So we're going to need some souls. And to get those souls, I'm going to go the long way up Shulob's path up the side of the mountain rather than taking the elevator and try and take down the magma wyvern. Prepare Death. Alright, let's see how tough he is. Pretty tough. Pretty tough. We have 10 heals though, so we can tank for quite a while as long as he doesn't one-shot us. Now here I'd like to discuss something. Magic is actually much worse in Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring than it is in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2. Now you might be wondering, Mustang Gus, what the hell are you talking about? Magic's about the same in all of them. Well, in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2, you just get X casts with each spell. But in Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring, you get casts equal to your magic meter, and of course how much the spell costs. And to refill your magic meter, you have to exchange one of your heals. So we have 10 heals, right? We can heal 10 times in this boss fight. But if I was a mage, and I'd fully invested into magic, I would need like 5 of those to be magic replenishers. Meaning, you have to do twice as good in the fight in order to not need those extra five heals, making magic overall much worse. Go for the butt. Oh, stagger, no way! Can I get it, or is he in the magma? Oh, we get it, let's go, let's go. Oh, I can whiff that! No, I think he still had like mobility frames from being staggered. We need to be very careful. That uh, powered up, like magma weapon he's got, that's definitely gonna one shot us. We need to make sure we stay at absolutely full health. Oh my, the explosion from that! Oh, I get it now. You're supposed to, you're supposed to jump. You're supposed to jump. That's how you dodge that. I was like, how do you dodge it? And then I'm like, this is Elden Ring. You can, you can jump. Boom! First try Magma Vivern. What was I even worried about, chat? What was I even worried about? Right, show me that fat stack of souls. 24k! Not bad. Not half bad. Now, that's a good few souls, but not quite enough to purchase all of Sylvanas' souls. So, we headed up into the Atlas Plateau and quickly killed the third water boatman, which actually gives us access to another hex, Tibia's Summons, which summons three skeletons that hit in an area. Very cool, fits our theme, but terrible accuracy. Okay, purchase the second puppet. Then he gets his next scheme. Scheme, how we it. Oh, he's leaning in, Chad. He's leaning in. I'm interested. <laughs> if you know, you know, Chad. You want to play me hard? Praising. No, I don't. Well, then you better not up. Praising. Because I've swallowed just about as much as I can take from you. Hey, phrasing. 
<laughs> okay. Continuing his story. After we've officially purchased every single spell and all of his puppets, he finally trusts us enough to give us his next secret mission to find the Amber Starlight Shard. This is just related to his quest. You can't, like, use it to regenerate a whole bunch of magic, as awesome as that would be. But upon handing this in, we'll finally complete the quest. And finally, my reward... Yes! There it is, chat. The Magic Scorpion Charm. Excellent. And he also, like, you can continue his storyline and you can turn other people into puppets for him. You can, like, kill certain NPCs and make them puppets. But none of them are skeletons, so we can't use any of them for this playthrough. Excellent. Oh, that's going to be a big boost in magic power when we're finally ready for it. When we're finally ready for it being the key word, as I still do not have enough HP in order to transfer over to intelligence to be able to cast Death's Rancor, and there's still one more upgrade we can make, and it's not going all the way to the Consecrated Snowfields for the third ring, but we are going to get to that eventually. So, and all my other playthroughs of Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, the staff I chose was just whichever staff looked the most deathy. For example, like Dark Souls 2, there was a skull staff that was perfect. There is no skull staff in Elden Ring, so I looked through all of the staffs, and to my great surprise, there is the death prince's staff that actually boosts the power of death spells so that begs the question how do we get the staff well it is in the final area around where fear is in the nocturnal city underworld area so in order to get there we need to activate the general Rodan fight we need to beat general Rodan. we need to head down into the nocturnal city we need to go down the secret side passage beat the double gargoyle boss go up the weird coffin elevator waterfall thing to get access to the correct area and then is just sitting waiting for us on the top of one of the towers but first steps first we need to beat general Rodan. now in my head i was like General Radan, my favorite boss fight, kind of fight up with all my summon friends. And then I remembered, I can't summon for this. Oh, God, this is gonna suck. I can't it without summoning, so let's see how we go. Let's see how we go. No summon was Radan? Bring it on. So after over an hour of attempts, we did finally get this run, but oh my god, this was so hard. This boss is a real challenge if you don't summon, and it is like a laundry list of things you have to deal with. One, you have to deal with actually getting to him. When you run up to him, he rotates from shooting AoE arrows at you, shooting AoE arrows above, and shooting arrows directly at you. If you get an unlucky sequence of these, that is just free damage on the way over to him. And you can even die to this if you get unlucky. So you have to roll the dice, whether you're lucky on that, then you get to push up to him. Now, for the most part, his up-close attacks aren't too terrifying. He has one very delayed right-hand swing, which is annoying. And he has a really fucking devastating back right leg kick which is so quick it's pretty much guaranteed to hit you if you're mid combo but it's very frustrating but then the actual challenge comes in phase three hey, bubble shield help me there. oh come on that collision man It's been too long now, you can be able to shoot the balls out before you can kill him. Okay, here they come. Oh, we love it though, huge! Fuck!
I can't even see right now. Come on, just one bleed. One bleed, please. No! Please not. Yes! Yes! Oh. Oh my God. That took just under an hour. Not bad. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Whew. If we got that stagger. That actually would have been like easy win. That actually would have been an easy win there. Oh, those like those ones were like shot out. The meteors. We were so lucky that he retreated and then fired them rather than firing them right away. That was like the perfect opportunity for us to pull back and dodge them. And with Radan finally slain, that opens the entrance into the Nocturnal City. Now, it's very strange, this, like, requirement of beating Radan to get to the city, because you beat Radan. That's an incredibly difficult boss fight. At least it is, like, before they nerfed him. Or if you're like me and you're fighting him with no summons. So imagine you're doing one of those scenarios, right? You beat Radan. It's super hard. Then you get down here. This is the only way to get here. You can't get here without beating Radan. The enemy's here. I just an absolute cakewalk compared to him. Like, genuinely, we just steamrolled the next few enemies. From Mimic Battle Chat. Who could stop Miss Death? Maybe Miss Death herself. I'm not even going to summon. We'll go mano y mano. Oh, that guy's cheesing it naked? What a noob. Now we're doing it legitness. Show me what you got. that like a uh, spider-man meme you she can use my droppable items i did not know she could use the droppable items that's crazy that's crazy Uh, maybe, maybe. I'm still on the fence about that. They might be a bit too strong. I feel like it's like in Dark Souls 1, how like Dark Bead would have broken the game. I feel like that might be too strong, but maybe. If I'm like really stuck on one of the last bosses, I might allow it. She never even got a hit. She never even got a hit. You are nothing to the original. Now, we could go immediately and fight the double gargoyle boss and get the staff, but I thought, you know what? We need some souls to level up anyway to get the intelligence requirements, so I may as well light all the braziers and do the secret animal god boss? I don't really know how to describe this, but I feel like that sums it up pretty well. DST rabbit boss. <laughs> I still can't believe they had to do it. Oh, wow, I had a second hat. Much better. Hey, no teleporting away. Oh my god, did he just fucking full heal? You cheating bastard. I already know I'm supposed to be allowed to heal. Okay, there was a bit of a struggle. There was a bit of a struggle. That heal actually threw me back, but we got him. We got him. 
And with that, we now have enough HP levels in order to transfer them into intelligence to be able to cast Death Rit in Core. But I'm not going to transfer them over until we beat this next boss and get the staff. So as soon as we have it, we're doing maximum damage. Now, I said all of the upcoming bosses were going to be a cakewalk. Yeah, that is with the exception of this boss. It is the classic two-on-one boss. And of course, if you've played a Souls game before, you know two-on-one bosses are hard as nails. Now, you do get a small chance. You get half of the first one's health bar before the second one shows up, but then it's all on. How the fuck am I supposed to deal with two of them at the same time? How? And that one's already hard enough with his fucking twin blade attacks. Like that. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't actually know if I can do this, champ. With Radan, I thought there was a chance. I don't even know if there's a chance with this. They fly away. They had to give them wings. They had to give them fucking wings. Four days. Nearly there, bro. Nearly there. Oh, now I'm poisoned. He hit me out of there. He's, he's actually secretly on my side, champ. Okay, I got one. I got one. I feel like we're never going to be able to beat the other, but I'm going to try. Oh. There's no way this repost kills him, right? Do I have a poison cure? I don't have a poison cure. No! I have no other way to heal! Wait, would a Runar kill me? Oh, a tiny bit. Is it enough though? No, not the AOE poison. not just fucking pull that, that out of the hat first try double gargoyles boss what what i can't fucking no no what? that's fucking crazy man that rune art gave us exactly enough hp to finish off the rest of the battle that was too good bro oh that was too fucking good and with that, we get to celebrate by going to bed in our lucky Miss Death themed coffin. That is also the elevator that leads up to the next area. That, let me tell you, I did not figure out for the longest time in my first playthrough. Because I was like, why would you get in this random ass coffin? Yeah, needless to say, this is one of those things you kind of need to know in advance. And then one of these towers you jump off onto. And then it's like around the tower. So is it this one? Is it this one? Could be. Oh, there it is! There it is, Prince of Death Staff. Oh, that's beautiful, Jim. I love it. I love it. I always thought the blue of the staff, like, clashed with our death aesthetic. But this, like, nice amber, that is perfect. That is perfect. Permanent 20% boost to our death rank or damage. And after quickly going and grabbing the smithing stone bell bearing in order to upgrade it, we got it up to plus 11, and respecking, we were ready to go. Apart from one little mistake. Ah, 
It was 34 intelligence, not 32. Oh my god, chat. It wouldn't be an Elden Ring respec if you didn't accidentally do it wrong at least once, right? <sighs> Please let this damage be good. We've got the staff. We've upgraded the staff. We have the rings on. Come on, baby. Show me some good damage. But, unfortunately, that is all we have time for today, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you want to be my hero, why not consider subscribing? And if this wasn't intense enough for you, you can check me out on Twitch. We recorded all of this live. And make sure you tune in next episode when we try and fix this absolute clusterfuck of a build. I don't know how Death Rancor is doing so bad. I've played this game as a mage, and I used Death Rancor, and I was hitting like 800 plus. Like, we can get it a little stronger, we can max out the staff, and there's one more ring available, but I feel like that's going to take our 300 damage to 400 damage. Oh man, and we've spec out of HP to use this. <sighs> this is going to be a challenge to fix.